Now let's talk about how to dispense form in place gaskets. Three axis dispensing machines have the X axis left or right, Y axis towards you or away from you, and a Z or Z axis, which is up from and down to the part. These machines may have all three axis in a gantry over the part to be dispensed, or the table that holds the part may move, supplying one or more of the axis movement. These machines come in all sizes from tabletops to large inline machines, and there are many excellent suppliers of this equipment all over the world. Greater than three axis machines add rotation around the three primary axes. Here we're going to call A, B, and C. These are the pitch, yaw, and roll to move the parts through space. By adding a rotation around two axes on the part, you actually can't dispense parts at an angle. By adding C, the third axis of rotation, you can actually use an asymmetrical needle tip, allowing for the shape to be added to the gasket, cross-section, or dual dispensing of the conductive, non-conductive gaskets. While a bit more technical, we did want to briefly touch on the technology used in the dispense equipment. So most material is provided in cartridges or syringes and is dispensed using a piston controlled by an electric motor or a plunger that is controlled using compressed air. More complex dispensing equipment uses a two pump or plunger system. The first pump is used to feed the material to a second pump, often called a metering pump which offers more precise control of the compound flow. This allows more cross-sectional control and greater control for starting and stopping the flow. Gears and screw pumps are common types of metering pumps and are often needed when large containers of material are used instead of smaller syringes. Needles come in many shapes and sizes and are often made from many different materials and can come from many different suppliers. By choosing the diameter of the needle tip opening or orifice, in conjunction with the speed of the dispense head movement and the force of the pump, you can control the gasket feed cross-section in just about every dimension. Some needles do not have a round opening, but rather are shaped such as a triangle or an oval, which allows for some customization of the gasket cross-section. Here we have the various features of the form and place bead on a housing. The first is the bead start, or where the gasket makes contact with the housing. This is where the bead will first establish a tackiness to the surface, and the rest of the bead path will follow from this point. The point at which the bead ends is known as the bead stop. This point is where the machine will end the dispensing of a specific path and will usually have a quick back and forth motion to separate the bead from the rest of the material in the dispense tip. It's important to note that parts may often have uh, many different starts and stops depending on how complex of a part it is. The point at which two beads intersect is known as a T-junction, as you can see here on the slide. And all of these features, there can sometimes be additional tolerances on bead height or location that we can get into more detailed on the next slide. But to combat this, beads can sometimes be trimmed to make sure there are no points like the tail that are preventing an effective environmental seal. As we mentioned, Sierra and I wanted to touch on a few limitations of dispense. The dispense needle, the point from which the material is dispensed, needs to avoid all cover features and locating or registration pins using cover holes. We call this the avoidance zone. And generally it can be about 10 thousandths in from the wall or a Z axis obstruction. There are also initiation gap tolerances and termination gap tolerances to watch out for. The initiation gap is the distance between where a bead starts and an interrupting feature while the termination zone is the distance between where the bead ends and any bolt hole, housing wall or material standoff. Beyond these limits, gasket design bead path is simple. If you can get there, you can dispense there. <laughs> when Z or Z obstructions appear, you can use a longer needle to work around some features. But on the other hand, the cost of changing needles for obstructions may lead to slower flow and longer dispense rates, adding some cost. A simple housing or cover design will often not cause these issues. Especially because form in place beads are used in small applications with limited room for error, it is important to note the tolerances on the bead. Tolerances can often depend on the quality of the dispense equipment, but at the end of the day, the beads are in a liquid state and cure to a hardened elastomer. They will not be able to hold as tight of a tolerance as machine parts can. Oftentimes, 
beads of different sizes will have different tolerance ranges with the larger bead needing a larger tolerance. In most cases, beads will have a single measurement be the leading dimension and the other dimension be a reference relative to that 85% ratio we mentioned. We did wanna point out that while the bead tolerances may be relatively larger for the size gaskets, the center line positioning is held to a plus or minus 100 thousandths tolerance because of the robotic dispensing and the repeatability of the CAD file. Much of the cost incurred for form in place gasketing is the material and the time to program and run the parts. Most dispense machine op programmers will determine the most effective way to run the parts while avoiding constant starts and stops and added time. Internal cavities and wall segments are often run first with perimeter beads run at the end of the dispensing process. As you can see in the top image, some housings are more complex and require additional starts, stops, and key junctions. Alternatively, the lower image shows a bead dispensed in a single path with only one start and one stop location, simplifying the process, reducing the time, and lowering the cost. 